Treasury yields heading toward their fifth straight day of declines, which could be a signal of economic weakness. We're looking at how to navigate these moves with the Yahoo Finance Playbook. And joining us now is Michael Kushma, CIO of Broad Markets Fixed Income at Morgan Stanley, along with Chip Huey, Managing Director of Fixed Income at Truist. And uh, let me just begin with the tenure with you, Michael. Uh, we've seen this, these five days of declines here. We're approaching 4.25%, the lowest in about two months. What do you, what do you make of this decline? Well, I think it's a, it's a reaction to the overreaction when yields rose right, quite dramatically in April and May on the back of some bad auctions. There was some inflation data in the first quarter that wasn't very good. Yields got up to about 470 um, and that was probably an overreaction to data, which was it was technical. It wasn't that much of a deterioration in fundamental data. And since then, so not only did we have a, a cheap tenure at that point, but the data in terms of inflation data and economic growth data have all been very positive for the reignite, reignition of this soft landing story that the Fed will cut rates, economy slows down, inflation slows down, but not too much on the growth side, and everything is good. So we're back to that, to that you know, Goldilocks world again. Well, speaking of back to that, um, Chip, I want to bring you into this because what Michael alludes to is kind of like this whipsaw that we've been under. You know, there's going to be six cuts. There's going to be three cuts. There's going to be no cuts. Well, maybe mm -hmm. there are going to be cuts. I mean, like, it seems like we're kind of back to maybe a cut or two this year. You, I think you think that there's maybe a cut in September. Like, how do you even trade this when there has been so much volatility in those rate cut expectations? Yeah, it's, it's been very volatile, but I do think the Fed is going to want to see some more disinflationary evidence before it initiates that first rate cut. But the past couple of weeks of data suggests that those trends may be starting and may be laying the foundation for the Fed to be able to go ahead and move. So we do think that the Fed will ultimately lower the Fed funds rate for the first time in September, leave that optionality open for a potential second cut uh, in December, but allow the data to dictate that. Michael, what's your opinion of the entire conversation surrounding the soft landing? And I'm asking it because this has happened maybe once, um, arguably in 1995, according to Fed lore, economy was doing very well. But the reason I ask this is it looks like a soft landing until it isn't, until the data rapidly deteriorates and is very predict uh, unpredictable. Um, what gives, what do you think, the con where do you think the confidence comes with all these soft landing predictions? I think it really comes to, an, uh, uh, to a, a repeat of the 94, 95 scenario. I'm, I'm old enough that I was actually involved in markets in 94, 95. I remember distinctly that, that period where the Fed raised rates very aggressively in 1994 from 3 to 6% in one year, which was unheard of for uh, at least a decade. And yet nothing much happened to the economy. And the reason being is the economy had fundamental strength and there weren't a lot of imbalances. So coming in this whole rate hiking cycle, there wasn't a lot of credit, you know, credit overhangs. The private sector was delevered. The government sector relevered up. We know the government deficit and debt has gone up a lot, but the private sector has been really, really good shape. So the rate hikes haven't reached the levels that would cause distress amongst important components of the economy. And the lack of distress, which is similar to what happened in 94 and 95, allows the economy to continue um, doing just fine. However, the Fed did pivot in 95. They realized in the 95, 96, their rates were on the, on the high side. So they cut rates about 100 basis points. I think that's what's the most likely scenario. I don't know if it'll be September, December, but over the next 12 months, we are likely to see 100 basis points of rate cuts just to get things more in line with what is a stronger economy, but a not accelerating economy would need. So how, if we're going to get cuts, whenever we're going to get cuts, let's talk about then how you position yourself within fixed income. Chip, I'm going to take this one to you. You know, we talked to one portfolio manager earlier who said many of his clients are 70% to 90% in equities right now, sort of as an inflation hedge. I imagine that's not what you're telling folks at the moment, but talk to us about, first of all, sort of allocation-wise, how people should be thinking about fixed income in this environment. One thing that we're really talking a lot about is reinvestment risk, because we have seen a tremendous amount of demand in the first couple of years of the yield curve, right? So as the Fed starts to talk about and then ultimately initiate those, those cuts whenever they may come, we do expect over the next year or two to see yields in that part of the curve start to come down. And that creates reinvestment risk, that when those maturities then come due, we are then in a lower interest rate environment. So 
what we're seeing based on where we are in the Fed cycle now is an increased value in duration. You know, yields out a little bit longer are still very productive and you can lock in those yields for a little bit longer period and, and, and provide some insulation from that volatility that comes along with the Fed ultimately starting its rate cut cycle. And Chip, let me ask you about uh, corporate credit right now. Spreads have been pretty tight with respect to sovereign bonds, uh, not that much more than uh, a government-issued bond, such as from the United States. W when, what are the conditions under which you would th see that, expect to see that change? Um, what is coming down the pike that might turn that table? Yeah, we need. in our view, we would be patient around corporate credit right now because, as you said, spreads just remain very, very tight, historically tight. And we don't think that really aligns very well with very tight Fed policy and a little step down in growth that we're seeing from a really torrid pace back in 2023. So we would want to see those spreads just better reflect the economic realities that we currently face, and then we may see more value there. And we think that, that opportunity is coming. But we, for now, we would be patient until we see that adjustment to, to wider spreads, better compensation for that, and a more improved kind of risk-reward landscape in credit. And Michael, we got 20 seconds. Can you give us your real quick strategy as well? Uh, the, the strategy is simple, short-term versus long-term. From a long-term perspective, fixed income hasn't been this attractive for 20 plus years. You have to go back to the pre-global financial crisis, early 2000s with yields at this level. So from a long-term perspective, this is as, probably as good as it gets. 10 year, 10 year corporate bonds yielding 5.5%, high yield yielding around 8%. These are very attractive, absolute yields if inflation stays in that 2 to 3% area. In the short term, however, the yield curve is inverted. You're not paid very much or you're not paid at all to extend duration. And we think you can be patient to extend duration because we're not that worried about a recession. We don't think the Fed will aggressively cut interest rates. So the curve will stay inverted for a lot, much longer period than people expect. Right. So stick to sort of the two year to five year part of the yield curve. Michael, Chip, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks.